Rahman Rahim. This is about writing test papers, which is very essential for all teachers, especially in experienced ones. Uh, this is done by Professor Sawson Saleh Sariya and Instructor Jumane Shakir Muhammad Taqi. Uh, I will give some pieces of advice to inexperienced teachers. The first piece of advice is don't try too many questions. Although you should try to make the questions comprehensive, you cannot cover every single given material. Don't forget, you spent hours teaching your students and the test probably will take an hour or an hour and a half. You cannot cover everything, every single element you taught your students in your questions. You have to be brief, you have to choose, but try to be comprehensive in that you choose from the beginning, the middle and end. But everything, this is impossible in testing. The second piece of advice for inexperienced teachers is don't make your questions very difficult or very long. You don't need to prove anything to your students. You are just testing how much they have learned. Even the good ones will get tired and may fail. Some teachers think that their students have become like them after teaching them for a number of hours or weeks or even months, <clears throat> which is incorrect. Your students are much less than you. They don't know everything. So don't make the questions very difficult. I have seen teachers who uh, feel very proud of making their questions as difficult as possible, as if this will prove something to their students that they understand everything, which is incorrect. Even the good ones, sometimes they get tired after spending, uh, let us say, time in working very hard and trying very hard to find the questions. Good questions? does not necessarily or uh, are not necessarily very difficult or very long. Another piece of advice, divide your marks correctly among the questions. For example, when you have four questions, each question should be 24, it should be out of 25 marks, but not. Some teachers do this division. Question one, they will give it 20 marks. Question two, 30 marks. Question three, 50 five marks and the question for 45 marks. This will lack balance in your questions, especially if you give the students uh, the freedom to leave out uh, a question or two. In this case, it will be difficult for you to divide the marks because you have to divide them equally. So keep this in your mind when you give questions. Try to acquire balance in your marks. It is better for you, especially when you correct hundreds of papers. The other piece of advice is give your questions dividable marks. For example, you have a 25 marks to a question with five items, and in this case, each item will get five marks. Or 24 marks to a question with 12 items, and in this case, each item will take two marks. But avoid marks like 20 marks to a question with seven items. In this case, uh, how much marks, how many marks would you give for each item out of seven? If you divide the 20 over seven, how much? It will, it will not be three. Or 25 marks to a question with 13 items, for example. Again, you have to divide the 25 uh, over 13, how much will be the mark for one question? Or 16 marks to a question with five items. So you have to divide your questions equally. When you have a number of items, the total number should be dividable according to the number of items. Another piece of advice is avoid using numerical fractions in marking the questions like half or quarter. They are hard to add, especially when the number of the students is great. You see, if you are teaching uh, 100 or 20, 100 or over, and you are marking these uh, uh, papers, it will be very hard to uh, collect and sum up uh, the total of the questions. 
that you will get tired after a, a number of papers, after marking a number of papers. So think of yourself when you put the marks for your questions. Uh, give your test to a trustworthy colleague. Again, I repeat, these are pieces of advice to inexperienced teachers. Don't forget that teachers who are older than you or have more experience than you are, especially the trustworthy ones, give them your questions with a good command of English. Trustworthy colleague with a good command of English to go through it and point out possible ambiguities or inaccuracies. These teachers who are experienced may point out the possible ambiguities or inaccuracies or uh, in your questions. Be open-minded, accept advice, because still you are inexperienced. Look for the experienced ones and check with them. But again, you have to go for the ones who have good command of English, who are well-informed, and who are, uh, let us say, uh, able in their uh, command of the language. Here are examples of test papers with lots of problems. Look at this question. This is a comprehension question. Uh, after giving a passage to the students, the teacher gives them a number of questions to answer. Now, look at question number two. What are robots you used to? They are not used to, used for. If you commit such a question, if you commit such a mistake, the student will get this mistake and he will repeat it and you will, re be, will be responsible for this mistake. Or uh, if the student is knowledgeable, uh, as the trust in you uh, will be uh, belittled. Number three, look at number three. What will be the robots able to do in the near future? Now, we don't form questions like this in English. What will the robots be able? Again, such a mistake will uh, make students, the good ones, think uh, less of you or the ones who doesn't know whether this is correct or incorrect will follow your mistake. Number five, the word elderly means aged people, long people. Now, again, this is ambiguous. You have to specify means Aged people, you put it between two round brackets, or long people, you put it between two round brackets. You have to be very clear in making your questions. Students, uh, you know, they are uh, pressed, they are under pressure, so uh, they want something clear when they answer. Look at this example. Rewrite the following sentences using the following combinations of words. Uh, I was in the class when the teacher gave this uh, piece of a question to the students. You know, the students kept on asking me, what does the teacher want? What am I required to do? Am I going to add other words? Am I limited to these numbers of words? Because the question didn't make it clear. First, rewrite should be capitalized. Be careful about your punctuation marks. And this is not clear. Using the following combination of words, what? What do you want? It is not clear. Make your questions very clear. Specify exactly what do you want from your students. This is another example. Look, look at the mistakes here in the question, in the formation of the question. Full the following. Full is an adjective. It's not a verb. And it should be capitalized. And fill in the following blanks. It is fill in the blanks. The fill the following what? You have to specify using shall is a model, will is a model, and their equivalent is not going to. It is is going to. Notice the question number three in which you have to add, to add this. Ahmed has a lot of money. He, I can't say going to buy a new car. It should be is going to buy a new car. And if you keep it like this for the students, they will not add is. They will not know that there is a missing is, so they will keep it like this and they will learn something wrong. Look at question number four. The sky is full of clouds. It's, now this is possessive. It is not abbreviation for it and is. So either it should be it and there should be an is here, or you say it is, 
and then the students will write going to. So these are grammatical mistakes. Uh, look at this. Rewrite five of the following words to form correct questions. Now, which words do you mean? This is ambiguous. What does the teacher want? Rewrite the following words to form correct questions. Now, these are not words, these are items. Or you can say groups of words. But when you say words, this means all the words. Which of them? The teacher has to be clear, especially in exams when the students are under pressure. Another example. Identify and comment on two the following quotations. It should be of the following. Don't forget the uh, prepositions. Uh, and review your questions. Review your uh, questions to look for printing mistakes, grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes. You are responsible for all of these. Now look for question number six. Choose either A or B. What significance of the, uh, the, the Picasso's arms? Now, what does the teacher want? What is the significance of the Picasso's arms? Form your questions correctly. Mind you, these are samples of uh, real uh, question papers for, which were given to students by, by, by inexperienced uh, teachers. Who is Mrs. Uh, Sparset? Speak in detail, not in details, in detail. Now, look at this question. It is a, it's a sample from questions on a grammar. Now, in, it's a question on a grammar, and then you say negate without capital letter. It should be written with capital letter. Question number four, complete the following sentences. Now, what does the teacher want? It's not clear. I suppose what? What is the student supposed to answer? To add what? What do you want? It's not clear. And when I was there uh, looking after the students in the exam, lots of students kept, asked, kept on asking me, what does the teacher want from me? What am I going to do? Thank you for your attendance. And I hope you keep these pieces of advice in your mind next, mind, next time when you uh, write questions.